The next panel is Jeanette Sullivan, Chuck Freeman, Sarah Tuttle, Randy Cox, Victoria Espinoza, Rebecca Gallagher. You'll just tell me your name. I'm going to register everyone else as wishing to provide oral testimony, but changing that to registering a physician. And these are all in opposition. Tell me your name again. Victoria Espinosa. Okay, there you are, Reggie. There you are. Thank you. Go ahead. Good morning. My name is Victoria Espinosa. I'm a second-generation Austinite Texan American, proud Chicana, and survivor of domestic abuse and I am in opposition to this bill. Being raised Catholic, my religion leads me to believe that abortion of any kind is wrong. But being an American, I strongly believe that my religion has no place in politics. In all honesty, this bill will not affect me. I'm fortunate enough to be insured, have access to women's health care services, and live in Austin where abortions will still be available to me. And since we're being honest, being the mother of a preemie that was born at 26 weeks, if this abortion was only about banning abortions after 21 week, 20 weeks and not closing the majority of clinics that offer health care services other than abortion to low income and uninsured people, I might be on the other side of this argument. I was 17 when I found out I was pregnant. My mother, being 15 when she had me, I knew the, single, I knew the struggle of a single mother firsthand. With eyes wide open and my family supporting me, I decided to carry out my pregnancy. My son is now six years old. Abortion was not the choice for me, but it was a choice. Being a single teen mom was the, one of the most rewarding experiences of my life, but it was also the most difficult. It is not something that I would wish to force upon anyone. It is certainly not something that I would want my younger sisters to have to, have to endure without being able to explore every possible choice. Mostly, I am here today because what I do with my body is not a debate. It is my choice and my choice alone. I find it fitting that the state that sparked Roe v. Wade is the same place that women have stood up and shouted, we will not sit by while you strip us of our rights. Susan B. Anthony once said, no man is good enough to govern any woman without her consent. And I am here today to tell you that you do not have my consent to tell me what to do with my body. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. Next panel, Stuart Borbner. Carol Smith, Robin Bosch, 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 come on up, that's Robin, obviously, Nancy, Nandy Besner, okay, is that a T? Okay, Erica Shamry, Ramona Brown, Nancy, well, no, Robin. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Robin Bosch. I live in Austin. I am a constituent of Senator Watson, and I'm here to speak out against Senate Bill 1. As everybody said all day long today, it is obviously as a U.S. citizen and a woman my constitutional right to a legal and safe abortion. Uh, unfortunately, I feel that Senate Bill 1 includes regulations that would severely limit access to safe and legal abortions for many women. Um, the burden seems to be on women in rural and poor communities. Quite honestly, as the woman who spoke earlier, this probably won't affect me. If I have to make a decision to have an abortion, I live in Austin, in which case one of the five clinics will probably be here. also have financial resources to go somewhere else where my constitutional rights are still being upheld. But the 16-year-old in El Paso or the 22-year-old in Brownsville might not have that same choice, and that to me is really unfortunate. Um, in my opinion, this bill is a non-direct way to limit the right to abortion under the guise of women's safety. And I think if we're concerned about the standards of the centers that perform these abortions, then we should find funds to upgrade them, not create legislation to close them. Um, I'm disappointed and embarrassed that in 2013, I have to say that my body is not a vessel, nor is it merely a host, and it's definitely not a wallet with a $20 bill inside. Um, my, my right to procreate is my own, my choice is my own, and I think my medical decisions for myself and my body should also be my own. Uh, I think the government is supposed to uphold my constitutional rights, not spend time chipping them away. So I urge you to vote against this bill. Thank you. Nancy Besnett? Besnett. Besnett. Go ahead. 
Um, my name is Nancy Besant, and I'm opposing SB1 as a private Texas citizen. I'm a lifelong resident of Texas and a constituent of Senator Kirk Watson. First, since this bill states that it must apply separately to, quote, every individual woman, unquote, I think it's therefore imperative that each Texan who wants to testify about this bill should have the chance to be heard. Hearings should be held in all parts of the state, especially in remote areas that will probably lose access to low-cost birth control and reproductive health care, including abortions as a result of this bill. Second, a woman and her doctor, not state politicians, should make personal medical decisions. Third, the convoluted effort to enumerate a limited set of conditions under which abortions will be allowed cannot possibly protect, quote, every individual woman, unquote, against the multitude of particular circumstances that may endanger her health or her future. Fourth, once abortions are rendered too difficult to obtain, especially in the vast rural areas of Texas, Women in those areas will learn once again how to kill themselves by trying to self-abort with a coat hanger. Descriptions of how to self-abort were not difficult to obtain when abortions were illegal. I know because as a teenager I learned one day in detail how to do this by simply how to do this simply because I sat at a different school lunchroom table and listened to the conversation there. I believe this bill will also result in the loss of medical care for Texas women when doctors decide not to become obstetricians or not to practice in Texas or decide to retire because of the professional risks created by this bill. I think even people who don't want abortions and want to carry out a pregnancy will be put at risk by this. Thank you. Ramona Brown? No. And I'm sure Ramona Brown is registering position in opposition. Erica Shamrick. Same thing. Not Stuart Wardner. Carol Smith. Carol Lynn Smith. I'm Carol Lynn Smith. I live in Travis County. Kirk Watson is my senator, and I'm here to represent myself. But I keep in mind my two adult daughters and uh, my sisters, my friends, many people who have told me that they appreciate that I'm here to speak with you. And this is the first time in 61 years of my life that I've ever testified before a Senate committee. So um, I'm kind of thrilled by it. And um, I, as a social worker, I've worked with victims of sexual assault and family violence. I uh, I was in high school before women had the right to an abortion, had access to abortion in the state of Texas. So I'm here uh, against the bill. I'm here listening to hours and hours and hours of testimony, which proves that there's no clear reason why we would upgrade the level of services provided at clinics. There's no clear reason why we would further restrict the time frame that a woman can choose whether to continue her pregnancy or not. That there are countless reasons to continue to provide medical services and safe abortion services to all women. This would unduly restrict the women that live in our rural areas and women with low resources. And I want to say I am grateful that I feel the privilege to be able to afford to be here for the last few days. And uh, I speak for all the women who don't have that access. Thank you. Thank you. 